Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Andronikos. I am the tech consulting lead at Whalebone. And hi, everyone. I'm Tomas, and I'm the security analyst also at Whalebone. Uh, before we dive deeper to the topic, a bit uh, some information about us. Uh, right now, we are both working at Whalebone. Uh, Whalebone is a cybersecurity company doing DNS-based security and identity protection. Uh, before that, I was doing uh, research in Skitali Group in University of Patras. Uh, the, the research topic was automation of honeypots. Yeah, um, and I would introduce myself as a security researcher uh, with some background in the public sector. Basically, I was an incident responder for the government. And now I've delved into uh, end-user threats and uh, researching uh, DNS security. Thank you. So um, during today's presentation, we will go over um, protective DNS and in more detail DNS for EU. Um, the project, its applications, but the main focus will actually be the threat intelligent aspect and how we are planning to build an actionable uh, information sharing platform. Furthermore, we will discuss the applications of DNS for EU and how it can be offered to different groups of end users. Uh, first things first, a bit of a theory. So uh, DNS resolution is this magical process of translating a domain name to an IP address. Uh, whenever some process requires some network research via domain name, a DNS resolver is actually used and is responsible for fetching the results by iterating the DNS tree. Something like that, yeah. Uh, sounds simple so far? Yeah, well, there are almost 292 RFCs, more are coming. Uh, if someone is interested, they are very interesting. I highly recommend them. Uh, but we have to say here is that uh, this is process agnostic of the operating system and also the type of device. Yeah. So somebody can claim that DNS is the glue keeping the internet together. And at this point, I would like to offer a moment of sympathy uh, to all of us who have ever painfully troubleshooting some networking issues. And we came back to just these wise words. So. <laughs> Uh, as you may have understood, DNS is a critical service. Uh, today's talk, though, is not about all the things that can go wrong, but it's about how DNS can intersect with cybersecurity. So, uh, uh, let's consider the following facts. On the one hand, nowadays, there are 15 billion connected devices. The number is expected to grow to 24 billion by 2025, so basically in a couple of years. Sounds like a security nightmare. Uh, someone could ask, is there some common denominator? Is there something you can do at scale? So hopefully, uh, here the answers would be yes. So industry-wide research shows that more than 94% of attacks are actually utilizing DNS at some point of the cyber kill chain. Adding to the recipe the fact that all the devices, regardless of the operating system and the type of software they are running are using DNS resolution. As defenders, we have a unique opportunity to protect them at scale. This reasoning actually gave birth to the notion of protective DNS. What is protective DNS? It is the viewpoint that DNS is no longer only a protocol, but rather is a security service. Implementing filtering on the DNS requests and blocking access to malicious domains is a really, really easy way to establish a very first line of defense and block access to phishing websites, detect malware communication, as well as provide real-time insights to the security teams. In this way, the number of incidents can be completely and dramatically reduced. And here comes the main topic of today's presentation, uh, in this slide, you can see the extract for the original call for proposals. The primary goal of the project is to build a European protective DNS service, which will improve resilience, protect privacy, and also foster cross-disciplinary collaboration. DNS for you will have a strong security aspect and will offer protection not only against global, but also, and more importantly, against local cybersecurity threats. As it's highlighted in the last sentence, this is a key policy action announced in 2020 in the Commission's cybersecurity strategy for the digital decade. Uh, 
So soon after the call was issued uh, at Whalebone, we started building a consortium with members from different disciplines and different nationalities. The members are a mix of public and private entities, such as companies, uh, computer emergency and response teams, NGOs, and national research and education networks. In more detail, the members are CZNIC, the registry of the .CZ domain, the Czech Technical University from Prague, the Belgian law firm Time.lex, DESEC, a German non-profit organization focusing on DNS hosting, the Hungarian and Polish CERTs, and uh, Abi Labi from the Financial CERT of Italy. Also, the National Cybersecurity Center of, from Romania. Uh, furthermore, we have some associated partners, such as the Ministry of Electronic Government from Bulgaria, the National Cybersecurity Center of Portugal, uh, the Advice Company of Secure from Finland, and Chesnet from the Czech Republic. So, overall, each member of the consortium is adding its own expertise and contributing to the goals that have been set by the project. Uh, moving forward to the verticals of the project, DNS for you can be summarized in four pillars. Uh, threat intelligence, DNS for telcos, DNS for governments, and DNS for end users. The first case, which is the cornerstone of the project, is the threat intelligence aspect, which will be generated and applied to all the deployment scenarios. The threat intelligence will be the product of research based on the anonymized DNS for you traffic, as well as continuous information exchange. More information will be now shared from Tomas. Hello, uh, thanks for the introduction, Andronikos. And uh, thank you. Uh, as you mentioned, it's uh, the threat intelligence is uh, basically uh, the main pillar of all these uh, parts of the DNS for EU project. And uh, to give a brief introduction or brief definition, uh, because it's of an ambiguous term, uh, the threat intelligence is pretty much uh, a process of uh, understanding and uh, analyzing the current uh, cyber threats in context. Uh, it can go from a uh, high level st uh, strategic overview to the core basic of uh, tactical indicators of compromise. And uh, in the context of DNS for EU and this presentation, I will be mostly uh, dealing with the tactical level. That means uh, the indicators of compromise of the threats, meaning uh, the domain names. Um, at Bellbone, uh, we aim as, at threat intelligence as uh, providing as uh, accurate and timely uh, coverage of current threats in DNS space. And uh, to briefly introduce uh, our pillars of uh, our threat intelligence program, on a foundation level, uh, we of course cooperating with uh, existing security providers and open source feeds to cover the global threats. But that's of course nothing groundbreaking. Uh, but uh, what we aim to differentiate with the DNS for EU is uh, two things. Uh, first of all, uh, as Andronikos mentioned, we'll be dealing with the uh, anonymized uh, DNS traffic itself. That means uh, investigating uh, the DNS logs uh, to uncover new threats and uh, improve our accuracy uh, dealing with some early detections. And then the most important things that will be the uh, key difference uh, from all of the DNS protective services will be to establish a regional threat intelligence sharing. That means uh, we aim to be a central point in which uh, all the consortium members and also public and private sectors contributors um, can establish a sharing channels for threat intelligence uh, to basically make the European Union a more secure place and provide a more secure DNS resolver. Uh, the threat intelligence uh, in its core is pretty much a never-ending cycle. And uh, it's the same with us. Uh, so I will briefly introduce you to um, the each stages on how we aim to add uh, new detection systems to each and every step of the way when it comes to analyzing the malicious domains. So starting from the first uh, top, uh, we aim to provide uh, timeliness detections. That means uh, covering the threats as early as possible. Uh, in this stage, uh, we'll be analyzing the traffic uh, and also the registry from newly registered domains and certificate transparency uh, to catch the domains um, basically before it's even uh, abused by the actor and has a chance to actually cause some damage. And um, in this stage, uh, we are cooperating with uh, two consortium members, uh, the Czech Technical University and the NASC of Poland. 
where we aim to develop a machine learning model to cover uh, a TLD uh, namespace uh, detection model uh, to basically deny the attackers uh, the chance to abuse uh, the European domains. So domains like the .cz, .de, .ad uh, should be more covered uh, against uh, typo squatting and uh, impersonation and other malicious stuff, making the European uh, space more uh, secure. Uh, also in this stage, uh, the threat intelligence sharing channels uh, are important. That means uh, consuming uh, the threat intelligence uh, gathered from our consortium members and uh, contributors uh, that will be directly fed into the resolver and uh, protecting uh, from early detected threats. Uh, in the next stage, uh, there's a traffic analysis uh, that, as I mentioned, will be analyzing the uh, anonymized uh, DNS for EU traffic. And uh, here we are uh, already employing several uh, machine learning systems to detect uh, threats like uh, domain generated algorithms that are used by uh, malware communication, uh, DNS tunneling, and also researching the patterns and behaviors of uh, DNS sequences to uh, uncover some specific DNS threats, for example, uh, uh, car skimming on uh, WordPress sites or uh, uh, compromised websites that are often uh, abusing uh, the end users. And then in the uh, late stage, uh, we also aim to mitigate false positives. Uh, and here we are cooperating with the Czech Technical University again uh, to actually develop a system uh, that takes feedback loop from all the previous systems and uh, input it into the lifecycle so that we can uh, come with a false positive rate as close to zero as possible. Now, uh, I mentioned uh, machine learning several times, but um, maybe sorry for the disappointment, but um, I'm going to speak about uh, an example about something that hits much closer to home and uh, is much, let's say, a uh, simple threat. And that is um, the plague of the internet, uh, the phishing and smishing campaigns that are uh, targeting the end users. Uh, you may have seen several of those. Uh, it's always the same. Uh, it's basically spamming uh, all the users uh, everywhere in, in the world, particularly in Europe, is very popular lately. Um, pretending to be uh, some retail company, delivery services, check posts, uh, government agencies, and scamming the users for uh, their credit cards, their passwords, or their, their identity. Um, it's very widespread. Uh, it's very simple to use. So uh, there's very much uh, an issue how to deal with this uh, on a scale. Uh, also why it's important, uh, there was a recent study that uh, average uh, damage done to the end users by such scams is over 7,000 euros. So we're quite significant uh, damage uh, for average people. And uh, since we already don't like those, uh, we aim to provide a system uh, that uh, at least uh, mitigates the risk for our average citizens. Um, from what we saw, um, yeah, sorry. Um, when it comes to obstacles of fighting these uh, campaigns, uh, there's always an issue that uh, they have a very short lifespan. So it means uh, within a few minutes, the campaign is sent, uh, people click it, uh, fill it in credit cards, and uh, like uh, before the domain can be taken down, the damage is already done. And uh, currently, you can use some takedown services or reporting services, but uh, they don't provide the timeless, timeliness uh, that is necessary to protect the users. And also, there's no central point yet uh, that could be used uh, at scale in Europe. So uh, what we aim to do uh, is that uh, we are cooperating currently with uh, multiple telco operators and aim to scale it uh, to multiple uh, other partners in the public and private sector. Uh, because what we found is that uh, the moment this uh, phishing campaign starts uh, anywhere, uh, the brand that is impersonated or the telco operator that is actually running the SMS uh, services they are, very, they are aware from the very beginning that uh, this is happening and that the users are at risk. Uh, but they don't have any means uh, of effectively com uh, combating this other than just uh, making a press release or maybe for the telco to actually one time block it in the network, but there's no central point to cover all of the Europe and all of the users. 
So uh, we developed, developed a system that uh, basically works on a synergy of uh, the reporting party and the whale bone uh, that will be fed to the DNS for EU. And uh, it basically works on reporting the first initial uh, indicators of the campaign. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, one domain that was impersonating uh, DPD delivery services, as, as an example. And uh, once we uh, receive this uh, first initial alert, uh, our system that we call uh, Bazaar, because we uh, in the past we use it to, uh, uh, to basically deal with some scams on um, online marketplaces and kind of stuck with us, uh, it starts analyzing the campaign for some uh, patterns in a domain and uh, its met metadata. And it's looking for uh, certificate transparencies and uh, new registered domains and the DNS log itself to actually put together what is the characteristics of the campaign and start to block it uh, proactively. And uh, basically, it could be viewed somehow as a DGA, but not quite. It's uh, more simple than that. Um, so that the user is protected again um, uh, from the next uh, campaigns that come from the same source. So, um, uh, in this case, the sharing is caring, uh, and it uh, really helps, helps to protect the users uh, from the incoming threats. And uh, since we aim to actually push this and scale this to 100 million people, uh, we need to do this in an easy and automated way uh, that is accessible to everyone from both private and public sector. And to give you uh, one example, not the only one, but uh, the main one uh, of how we intend to uh, build a system that is uh, used for sharing the information. Uh, let me introduce you uh, MISP. Uh, to do, those of you who are not familiar, uh, MISP is an open source project by Luxembourg CERT and uh, is developed by a growing uh, community of volunteers. And I would say it's a fitting European solution for European protection. And it's becoming an industry standard for uh, all, both private companies and most particularly the government sector. And it's very easy to deploy and uh, very easy to maintain. And uh, why we chose it and where the key power lies when it comes to sharing the information is actually how it works with it. Because it's not just the indicators of compromise themselves, the domains, but it's also very uh, easy to enrich with context and uh, with uh, additional information that can be helped to uh, spread the alert on the new threats that is being identified. It's also very secure and granular when it comes to uh, sharing because you can choose uh, who you're going to share it with and uh, what are you actually sharing to the community. Um, and in this sense, uh, Wellbone will be running a dedicated instance that is offered to everyone, uh, not only just the consortium members, but everyone who is uh, interested in participating in sharing the threat intelligence. And uh, input to the MISP uh, will be automatically uh, fed through our pipeline and fed directly to the reservoir. So it will be a direct way to actually contribute to threat intelligence and protect the users. Uh, one bonus point on why this is important and uh, what can it bring in benefit uh, is the possibility of EU-wide correlation intelligence uh, of the threats. Because in this example, for uh, we could find uh, one of those phishing campaigns that were impersonating a government. And um, when we gathered the information from multiple sources, uh, we actually found that uh, it's not just a regional problem, but uh, the same actors was actually abusing the same mechanism and using the same infrastructure across multiple countries, uh, basically scamming uh, Czech Republic, Poland, and uh, Slovakia at the same time. Uh, so uh, having this some sort of uh, centralized point of the intelligence can be a valuable uh, information to actually uh, connect the dots and put the threat actor to spotlight. Uh, so that's all from me. Uh, if you are interested in uh, more of our work and uh, or in participating, you can reach us at threatintelligence at wellbone.com, uh, .io, sorry. And uh, now back to Andronikos, who will introduce more function of the DNS for EU. Thank you, Thomas. So, um, thinking about the requirements, so we are building a system, we want to actually effectively apply this threat intelligence, right? So, of course, the main focus is to ensure a secure, reliable, and efficient DNS service. 
All the DNS for EU resolvers will be deployed in European data centers and will be bound to strict privacy requirements. Compliance with regulations, of course, such as GDPR or local legislations uh, is also expected of the service. But in the very core, uh, the DNS for EU resolvers will be adhering to the latest security and privacy standards, such as DNSSEC, such as DNS over HTTPS, such as DNS over TLS. Uh, diving a bit deeper in this slide, you can find a depiction of the architecture of the project as we have uh, envisioned it and building it. So we have adopted a distributed architecture. We have combined a cloud-based uh, publicly accessible DNS service and more granular and individual private instances running in telcos or in government entities. Uh, to take the discussion a bit further, uh, we will discuss the use cases uh, for these individual scenarios. So, um, DNS for EU is a service for 100 million users. That's also the title of this presentation, right? And we have identified from the very first days of the project that we cannot achieve it without involving the telecom operators. Uh, for the operators, we are making available on-premise DNS resolvers, which will be uh, supporting, of course, the latest standards and will be integrated into their existing operations and systems. For the users, one of the major benefits of using the DNS for EU instances from the local operators is that they will have very, very low latency and the privacy preserving nature of the service uh, will help them to further secure their connections and, of course, optionally take advantage of the premium threat intelligence which will be generated from the project. Uh, another vertical which we have identified is that of the public sectors. Um, in the last years, we have seen an emerging patterns uh, where basically all the public organizations are very, very complex. And at the same time, they remember they remain underprotected. So I guess we all remember WannaCry and also some facing cases during COVID. Uh, so in several cases, uh, such as in the UK or Australia or in Canada, uh, there has been a countrywide protective DNS security solution offered by the governments. To that regard, DNS for EU will approach the same problem with a similar way, uh, but rather than offering a turnkey project, it will be possible to have individual DNS for EU instances for the individual countries. So we are able to have countrywide DNS for EU instances and also go deeper and have individual instances for particular offices, let's say. Uh, last but not least, of course, we plan to make available a service for the end users. Uh, in this case, the architecture will be utilizing the shared cloud DNS resolvers, which will be operated by the consortium, and we will make available multiple uh, configuration profiles. So we'll have the plain DNS resolution, the DNS resolution with the threat intelligence, and also some optional threat intelligence plus adult content filtering. Uh, when it comes to the timeline of the project, here is a high-level overview. So in 2023, we are finalizing the technology and also the security design, and we are starting the implementation of the uh, backend. Uh, we have already started discussing with options uh, for telcos, for governments, and we are intensifying uh, in the next uh, months, actually, of 2023. Um, we have also kicked off the threat intelligence research, and the first results are very, very promising. So in the next year, in 2024, we would like to invest the efforts for the exchange of the regional threat intelligence, which was identified by uh, Thomas. Uh, and in 2025, we would like to offer the service to the public, to the individual end users, uh, where we would have, of course, to scale where necessary. In 2026 and beyond, we'll go uh, to invest to the continuous um, improvement of the project. So, uh, in conclusion, and to summarize, DNS4EU aims in the next years to provide a resilient, privacy-focused, protective DNS resolution service uh, for European citizens, for companies and institutions. Uh, at the same time, we will, gen we will be generating highly actionable threat intelligence and, of course, collaboration and community involvement are very important for that. So, in order to be successful, we would like to invite all of you and we will happy discuss any questions and ideas that you might have. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you so much to both of you. Are there any questions to our speakers? Yes. Uh, hi, thank you for the uh, for the talk. Um, I'm I'm wondering a little bit um, if, um, as a user of this uh, DNS system, I would be subject to more uh, government control because there have been like efforts to to censor some sites um, that might not be malware but m might simply be politically uh, inopportune, uh, something that the government doesn't want to see uh, online. I mean, there are authoritarian governments within the EU. So um, would would you be uh, able to, to comment on that? Um, how much government control will, will there be over these systems? Sure. sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, cool. Uh, so the back end of the service, the cloud resolvers, will be actually operated by the consortium. Yeah. So the individual governments will not have uh, any control over it, yeah, and they are not subject, uh, this ENICA service will not be subject to some individual uh, legislation. Of course, the individual nodes, for example, if they are from some telco and they are offered in a particular country, they will have to follow the local legislation. So, for example, in Germany, if there is some rules that some particular websites cannot be followed, then the telcos would have to actually implement those. Thank you for the question. It's a good one. Thanks. Hi, this is Martin from the Foundation for Applied Privacy. Uh, could you elaborate a bit on the tech stack and the, the post uh, the plan? How can small organizations um, expect to be uh, participating after the, the consortium uh, ended uh, receiving funds? So uh, e eventually this project will have to be sustainable by itself. Right. So the consortium has come up with a business case on how to make it viable. And that's why we are actually starting from the telcos and the individual governments. Uh, of course, we are inviting this stakeholder group. So individual entities uh, like yours can participate in the design and also uh, participate in this threat intelligence gathering as Thomas uh, outlined. Yeah, but I will have more about that because, of course, the tech stack is kind of a huge thing. So I will catch up with you. Um, thank you for your presentation. I would be interested, um, as you said, that all of the um, resolving is basically anonymized before, right? That must be a technical nightmare. So could you elaborate a bit on how you guys actually establish anonymization on, on all of the packages that you basically need to investigate as well? So. Um, when it comes to the cloud resolvers, yeah, how this will work is that, of course, the DNS packets will be coming um, as normal DNS packets, and before being logged to the disk, we will be anonymizing the source IP addresses, right? So we don't really care about who is asking about some query, but we rather care about the domain. This is the main thing we'll be investigating. Yeah. Thank you. So if there are further questions to this thought-provoking topic, uh, feel free to catch up with our speakers later. They will be here around Grabham for a cup of coffee and uh, feel free to discuss this topic further. Thank you one more time for your speech.